And so as Pastor Brandon said, I want to just continue in the series of uh, living free. How many of you want to live free? Father, I pray right now, Lord, as I just teach your word, I pray your anointing upon my life to teach and preach your word. I pray for those that are hearing your word today, whether in this building or online. God, I pray that you'd give us revelation, give us light, give us insight. Thank you, Father God, for just the, the power of your word and the ability to set us free. We commit this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I want to begin by just reading the text that Pastor Brandon has been using for this series in Luke chapter 4 and verse 17. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So Jesus declared and proclaimed his purpose. He said, this is why I'm coming. This is why the Father sent me. This is what I'm going to do. And so he, he says, I was anointed to do five things. Number one, I was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. I'm going to be grateful for the gospel. Amen. And then number two, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Number three, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Number four, recovery of the sight to the blind. And number five, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And Pastor Brandon mentioned what that means a couple of weeks ago. So you could really summarize the entire passage by saying Jesus came and he was crucified. He died on the cross so we could live free. Couldn't you say that? He came to, so that we could live free. And one of the ways that he sets us free is through healing. Now, you may have never seen it that way or looked at it that way. But whenever you look at what Jesus described, he described that he came to heal us. Amen. Psalm 103 in verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. Sometimes we forget all the benefits of the Lord. But one of the benefits of the Lord is that he heals all of our diseases. Amen? Remember when the children of Israel left Egypt and they were on their way to the promised land, they were three days in the journey and they got thirsty because they were in the desert. And, uh, and they started complaining to Moses and they said, you know, at least we had water in Egypt. What you bringing us out here in the desert? And they started complaining and Moses didn't know what to do. And he said, Lord, what I'm going to do, you know? And, and so they finally get to this pool, this oasis. And so I know Moses is thinking, finally, I'm, I'm bailed out here. And as they went to the, to the oasis, the pool of water, the water was bitter, and they couldn't drink it. Remember that story? And so the, uh, so it says that in, in Exodus 15, in verse 25, Moses cried out to the Lord for help, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. And Moses threw it into the water, and this made the water good to drink. And it was there at Marah that the Lord set before him the following decree as a standard to test their faithfulness to him. He said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in the sight, in his sight, obey his commands and keep all his de decrees, then I will make you, I will not make you suffer any of these diseases I sent on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So the Lord reveals this is a, a compound name of God. One of the characteristics of God is that he is our healer. Amen. I am your healer. So when he threw that wood into the water, the bitter water turned sweet, and of course they could drink, right? Now, if the Lord is our healer, a good question to ask is, what does the Lord heal us from anyway, right? And so I want to just talk about three things that's right there in Luke chapter 4 that I believe we can expect the Lord to heal us in, okay? Number one, we can expect the Lord to heal our physical bodies, right? In Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to proclaim recovery of sight to the blind. Now, what does that mean? Recovery of the sight to the blind. I believe that's physical healing. One of the greatest provisions that God afforded his church is that we can receive a miracle of healing in our body. Amen? In, in Isaiah 53 and 4 and 5, which is a, a Messianic prophecy, a prophecy Isaiah spoke concerning Jesus, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs 
and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Now, we know that through the provision of the cross, we are healed spiritually, right? We know that. He forgives our sins. He covers our sins. So we can be healed spiritually. But there is a second part to the provisions of the cross, which is supernatural healing. Some people look at Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, and they discount physical healing. They say, no, he was talking about spiritual healing. But I think you got to let the Bible interpret itself, right? And in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 14, it says, When Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose, and she served him. And when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and he healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Just as Jesus did in Luke 4, you know, whenever he referred back to the Old Testament prophecy in Isaiah 61, that's what Jesus quoted in Isaiah. Matthew tells the story of Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law and casting out spirits by a word, and he refers back to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. So it does mean that the Lord heals us spiritually, but it does mean he heals us physically. Do y'all believe in healing? Amen. Now, what we need to understand is that when Jesus died on the cross, he died so we could be healed. Amen. And so now there's two keys to receiving healing. And one is this. We must believe in God's will to be healed. You know, uh, years ago, uh, we had a, a, a friend of ours that, that called me and, and knew I was a pastor and said, would you come and pray for my dad? He's been diagnosed with a, a terminal brain tumor. And so, uh, you know, we set up a time and I went and I went to the hospital and I didn't know, but she had also called like three or four other pastors and, and deacons and stuff like that. So when I got into the room, there was all these guys. And so, you know, I was just kind of like, didn't know what to do. So we just gathered around this bedside and, and we began praying. And, and one of them said, you know, they started praying prayers like one of them, I, almost he was praying for his family whenever he dies. And, and like there was no real faith in their prayer, I felt. And something rose up in me saying, wait a minute, I'm not sure that they know it's God's will to heal. And something rose up in me and I started quoting the word and I just began praying the word of God by his stripes he is healed. And I took authority over that infirmity in his body. And so I know those guys probably thought I was crazy, but, um, but listen, if you want to experience supernatural healing in your body, you got to believe it's God's will to heal you. Amen. Because John, 1 John 5.15 says, This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. We have to have confidence that it is God's will to heal our body. And you know, a few days later, this same man called me, and he said... Um, he had heard about the anointing of all, and he said, listen, I would like for you to come to my house and pray for me. And so I asked one of the elders of this church to come with me, and I went to his house, and it was just him and his wife and one other guy. And um, and so I, you know, we prayed in the hospital, but I anointed him with all and prayed for him. And, uh, you know, didn't feel any, you know, free songs or anything like that. We prayed. We just prayed. We just read the scripture, and we just prayed for him, and we left. Well, a few days later, he called me, and he said, man, Todd, when y'all prayed for me, it's like, man, like warm oil came over my body. And he said, I don't know if you noticed, but I felt like my feet was coming off the ground. I said, no, I never noticed that. I think my eyes were closed, you know? <laughs> like, like, you know, this is a brain, terminal brain tumor, you know? I was like praying hard, you know, whatever. And so he said, man, he said, I think God touched me. I said, well, I agree with you. I agree with your report. And do you know they went back and took a scan of his, of his head and the brain tumor was gone. They were getting ready to remove it. They said it's gone. Come on. That's a miracle. Amen. And so, you know, I tell you this story because if you, if you want a miracle healing in your body, 
You have to believe it's God's will to heal your body. Amen? And listen, the reality is some Christian leaders, some Christians and leaders don't believe that God is healing today. They think healing stopped when the apostles died. Or we left that dispensation. Well, I want you to know we didn't leave that dispensation. That God is healing today. Amen. And if I could do anything is encourage you that the Lord bore stripes on his back so we could be healed in our body. Amen. And I'm so grateful I grew up in the church under Brother Francis and Miss Babs who believed in healing, teached healing, taught healing, and, and stood on the word of God. And I'm telling you, miracles happen. Now, here's the second key is you got to believe in God's power to heal. Remember the story in Matthew 9? Um, the fa a father had a demon-possessed son, and he brought him to the disciples and said, can you pray for my son? And they prayed for him. Nothing changed. And so the father brought him to Jesus. And, and the father said, if you can do anything, would you help my son? And Jesus, I think, like God startled by his coming, and he said in Matthew 9, 24, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Do you know your faith releases things in the Spirit? You have to have faith in the blessing of God, in the provision of God. Amen? Do you believe in God healing your body? If, if you could just receive that in your spirit today. You know, I've noticed the more I believe in the supernatural, in supernatural miracles, the more supernatural miracles I see and I experience in my life. Amen? You know, I remember when Tanya and I, we got that report, we'd been married about three years trying to start a family, and the doctor told me, I'll never forget that call, and, and just receiving that call from a doctor who has authority, and he said, Todd, medically speaking, you can never have children. And it was just like somebody put a boulder on my chest, and, and I, I remember it was just hard to get out of bed. And that was such a negative report. And I remember just crying out to God and believing God, Lord, I can't believe this will be my plight, you know, and while I was praying... I, we had a plaque up on the entertainment center, and it, it had this verse, Mark 10, 27. With men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. And see, something happened that day. I knew it in my head, but I didn't know it in my heart. But that day, while I was in the presence of God, crying out to God, read that scripture, faith dropped from my head to my heart, and I just knew without a doubt that something miraculous was going to happen. And so I want to encourage you today, believe God for a miracle in your body. Amen? Well, you know, a few months later, we found out that Tanya was pregnant, and we have a 25-year-old daughter, and we got a double blessing. We got a six-year-old daughter named Penelope. That is the apple of our eye. Amen? God is good. Amen? So if you want, if you want a miracle, you got to believe for a miracle. Number two, a second area of life we can expect the Lord to heal us in, is we can expect the Lord to heal us from emotional brokenness. In Luke 4, 18, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. In other words, the Father gave me the ability to do this, is what he's saying. Because he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. Have you ever had a broken heart? The brokenhearted in this verse depicts someone who has been shattered or fractured by negative traumas of life. And Jesus came, he said, to set people from these detrimental effects of a shattered and a broken life. Whenever you think about it, whenever you've suffered from a broken heart as a young child or from growing up, what are you to do as an adult? Well, Jesus said, you know what? I didn't forget about that part either. Healing the brokenhearted, I think, refers to being emotionally healed. Remember the story in Exodus 15, the miracle of transformation, where the bitter waters turn sweet. The bitter waters of morrow, you could say, represents the bitter experiences of life. Have you had bitter experiences in your life? I mean, who has it, right? Mora could represent the hurts the abuses, the rejections of life that have broken your heart. It couldn't represent the internal wounds that has left you bleeding internally. And sometimes we, what we need is not a physical healing. What we need is an emotional healing. We need our broken heart to be healed. 
right? You know, I had a friend years ago that was coming to his church and moved to Colorado, and he was in a terrible car accident. And, and his wife told this story, and, and uh, it was like a, a fatal car crash. And people died. It was a multiple car crash, and, and, and after it was all over, he was walking around the scene, and of course, just totally uh, in shock. And he called his wife and said, Honey, I've just been in a terrible car accident on an interstate. But I want you to know I'm okay. Where are you at? And he told her. And, and so she got left work, got in her car, and raced over there. And then when she got there, she was saying, you know, she was looking for him. Where, where is he? Where is he? And so after the accident, he was just walking around. But all of a sudden, he collapsed. And, and they said, he's on the way to the hospital. She said, well, I talked to him. He said he was all right. Well, he's on the way to the hospital. She goes to the hospital and found out he died. And what they told her was he had internal bleeding. And he bled out. And I think that's a picture, brothers and sisters, of some of you and I. We're walking around in life and we're bleeding out. Because we got a broken heart. We're emotionally broken. And the Lord wants to heal our broken heart. Amen. 2 Samuel 13 is a story about King David's son, Amon, forcefully abusing his virgin sister, Tamar. She ran away weeping loudly. She was extremely hurt by the abuse, of course. But her brother Absalom encouraged her to, to, to be quiet about it and not tell anyone about her abuse. And because of her brother's advice, she never, she never said anything, so she never got emotionally healed. And the Bible says in 2 Samuel 13, 20, And Tamar lived in her brother Absalom's house, a desolate woman. A desolate woman. She was desolate. She lived a desolate life because she was suffering emotional brokenness. She never got a chance to heal. She had to be quiet. She had to stuff her hurt and never say anything. You know... Whenever I was growing up, we had, an, we, we had big families. I mean, the smallest family had three or four, and, and we had kids all over the place, and we were in the country, and, and we lived in the fields and caught snakes for entertainment and swam the, the bayous and, you know, left our underwears hanging on the tree, you know, and all that crazy stuff, you know? And one year during the holidays, one of our neighborhood families, they lost their 18-year-old son on New Year's Eve. He got killed in a tragic car accident. And this family was always special because the mother, she was the, she was the neighborhood mom. And whenever we find ourselves playing in their yard, she was the one that would always bring out popsicles and, and just, she would just treat all the kids like they were her own. But when she lost her son, all of a sudden, it's kind of like the light grew dim. And she stayed in her house and she closed the blinds. And we would go into her, their yard and in her family, but she was never around. And she died prematurely. And I believe she died of a broken heart. She died of a broken heart. And so I don't know if you've ever heard anything like this before in your life, but I want to encourage you today. You know, a, a young man yesterday in, in the Finding Freedom you know, he was telling me about his suffering, how he suffered under the hands of his stepdad, who shoved him through walls, and, and he'd been abused for 13 years, physically, and sexually. How does a person survive like that? I tell you, through the power of God. That's how you get through it, amen? And so I want to encourage you today. Remember when Moses was instructed to throw the wood into the water? The wood, I think, represents the cross. And it turns bitter water sweet. I think Jesus can, can sweeten the bitter waters of life. And he can heal the, the, the shattered lives, the broken lives. Amen? Psalm 147 and 3 says this, he heals the brokenhearted 
and He binds up their wounds. The Lord is our healer and He's able to heal broken, fractured, shattered lives. You can be healed if you've been physically abused. You can be healed if you've been sexually abused. You can be healed if you've been verbally abused, if you've been bullied, if you've been betrayed, if you've been, uh, you know, your heart's been broken by trusted friends and family members. The Lord is able to heal your broken heart. Amen. Isaiah 61 and 3 says, to counsel those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planning of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. Amen. You know, I remember whenever I was working in the I had this supervisor that, um, that was really uh, a tough guy to work for. And, uh, you know, how do you know if you know emotional healing? Well, if your emotions are like a roller coaster, like you up and down and everywhere, like there's no stability to your life emotionally. And, and this guy, it's like, I never knew who I was going to meet. Some days I, I met a guy that was happy and, and joyful and enjoying life. And the other days I met this guy that I didn't want to be around. And he was my boss, and he would tell me what to do. And, and, and sometimes uh, I, I did the same thing the same way, but sometimes it was okay. Sometimes it wasn't. And I was asking God to deliver me. Right? He knew I was a Christian, and I didn't want to mess up my testimony. And I'm crying out to God, God, would you deliver me? You know, like, like I, I wanted to say, Lord, take him out, you know. I, you know, deliver me, take him to heaven or something, you know. But one day, you know, and I just tried my best to be a Christian witness. And I remember one day, him and I began to have a heart to heart. And we were talking. And he was raised, he told me this story. He was raised in church, but his dad was abusive. And so his dad was a leader in church, but he would go home and beat him. And so he got bitter at God, at church and authority, and everything. And man, whenever he began to tell me his story, my heart broke for him. And I realized the reason why he was so emotionally all over the place, like he was just like, oh my goodness, how can you speak to people like that and think that's okay? But he was broken. Are you all with me? He was broken. He needed healing. And you know, the good, the good part of that story is, it was after I left, but I found out later, he got radically saved. Amen. And he got healed. So you can get healed physically in your body. I'm telling you, cancer has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. Disease has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. Amen. And emotionally, we can be healed. He's the balm of Gilead. Amen. He can heal our broken hearts and he can bandage up our wounds. Amen. And finally, the third area of life we can expect the Lord to heal us in. We can expect the Lord to heal us of spiritual oppression. In Luke 4, 18, back to the text, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Oppressed means to, to be bruised, overly burdened, crushed, beat down by calamity or demonic spiritual distress and harassment. I love what Acts 10.38 says about Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Jesus healed all who were oppressed by the devil. Sometimes physical, mental, and emotional problems can be caused by demonic activity or influence or oppression. In Luke 13 records a story of a lady who was sick for 18 years because of spiritual oppression, although it, you, would have no, you would have not known it was that. And in Luke 13, 11, there was a woman who for 18 years, and listen to what the Bible says, a sickness caused by a spirit. And she was bent double and could not straighten up at all. And when Jesus saw, he called her over and said to him, Woman, you are freed from your sickness. The King James calls it a spirit of infirmity. 
with a, a spirit of infirmity is caused by a spirit. A spirit of infirmity. In the Greek, it means weakness, and it describes people who are, are weak, sickly in their bodies, minds, or emotions. And the enemy desires to oppress people mentally, emotionally, and, and, and spiritually. He, he wants to press in on you. The enemy's desire is to just oppress you. You know, oppression to me is like somebody pressing down on you. And, and you know, this lady was bent over, and I think the enemy was pressing down on her. And I believe some people, they're walk, they're saved, they're going to heaven, but the enemy's pressing down on them. And they're walking around and they're bent over and they might be successful in the, in the business world or they might be, you know, they, uh, whatever, but there's something pressing them down. And I believe the Lord is saying, listen, I went to the cross. I shed my blood. I paid the price so that people could be healed physically, could be healed emotionally and could be healed spiritually. I died on the cross so that people could be set free from imprisonment and captivity. And I don't I want them bit down anymore. I want them to be upright and I want them to look up and I want them to be set free as the sun sets them free. Amen. Amen. Heal. Heal. Natural. Listen, natural and normal grief can turn into a spirit of grief and a spirit of heaviness. Natural fear can turn into a spirit of fear. I mean, we all battle with fear, but some people are bound by fear. Are y'all with me out here? You see, listen, unforgiveness can turn into a spirit of offense where now it's becoming demonic, amen? And then there's addictions that can turn into demonic strongholds or bondages. Abandonment, rejection can turn into a spirit of rejection where you carry a spirit of offense and you're looking for people to reject you everywhere. And that's not the plan of God. That's not the destiny of God. That's not the will of God. God wants you to be set free. Amen. Now listen, while I don't believe all sickness and mental problems or emotional issues are caused by demonic oppression, you, are you hearing me? I believe that sometimes sickness, mental issues, and emotional problems are directly caused by demonic oppression. You know, I, I experienced this a few times. One was, you know, some of you heard these stories, but I went to Haiti, my first mission trip, and we were, we were doing a pastor's conference, we were preaching, and then they took us to an orphanage to see the, you know, the, the kids that they'd rescued, they had taken in, that had no parents, and so the kids were all playing and they were showing us the buildings and whatever. And just before we got ready to leave, there was a kid like outside on, on the playground, but laying on a mat. And, and the pastor said, could y'all pray for this kid before y'all go? And it was me and a few other pastors. And we started praying. And I can remember I prayed what I had learned to pray. I plead the blood of Jesus over him and I take authority over the spirit of infirmity. And whenever we started doing that, that little kid, his eyes were closed and he was lethargic. He wasn't moving a muscle. All of a sudden, his eyes opened, his tongue started darting, and he started slivering like a snake. And I turned around and I ran. No, no, not really. But that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> that's what I wanted. It's like, whoa, my eyes got about that big. It's like, whoa, man, what do we got here? Then you know, in Haiti, there's a lot of voodoo and demonic activity, witchcraft and all that stuff. Well, we took authority and we cast it out. And so we left. And so, so he was, he was still there. We left. We went about our, and just before we got ready to leave, I thought about this kid. And I asked the pastor, I said, Hey, what about the kid? How's he doing? He said, Oh, I'm happy to report to you. As soon as y'all prayed for him, the fever broke and he's running around playing with the other kids now. Come on. Come on, are y'all hearing me? Sometimes even affliction, sickness can be demonically oppressed. Amen. I remember one time in the old auditorium, you know, we, we had, Brother Francis had an altar call or something, and, and this lady came up to, for prayer, and, um, and she, um, she said, I got a cold. It was a cold, like, you know? So it's like, okay, let's pray. Lord, I pray for her cold, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, probably all of us in here got a cold, sniffle, something, but you know, 
all of a sudden, when we started praying for her, she started manifesting. I don't know if you've ever seen manifestations, but listen, I want you to know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And listen, in churchanity, a lot of times we've forgotten about the power of God and the manifestation of His Spirit. And I'm telling you, when the power of God comes in, demonic spirits have to go out. Amen? I'm telling you. One time, Tiny, I think Tiny was with me. We had a lady that was, she was tormented. She'd hear voices and loud voices and she couldn't sleep at night. And she was so tired because she couldn't get rest anymore. And, and we started ministering to her and we found out that she had been abused and she had bitterness and unforgiveness and, and resentment towards her abuser. And we started talking to her about forgiveness and, and encourage her to forgive her offenders. And, and she forgave them. We prayed together. She forgave forgave them. When she forgave them, the power of God came upon her. And she started, like the Bible, like you read in the Bible, she started shrieking. And, and then uh, we, again, we didn't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, she got peaceful. And you know, all of a sudden, the voices went away. And she had peace. Amen. So I want you to know that we serve an enemy. We serve a God that has defeated the enemy. Excuse me. And that we don't have to be scared of the enemy. We don't have to back down from the enemy. We have authority over the enemy. And we can have victory in our lives. Amen. Come on. How many of you are grateful that Jesus is our healer? Sometimes the only freedom you're going to have is to be set free physically. Amen. Come on. Give the Lord a good just praise offering right now. Come on. Let's, let's declare that Jesus is alive. He's, he's delivered us. He sets the captives free. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, it all starts with spiritual healing. You got to be. Jesus came to preach the gospel to the poor. You know, the gospel is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's the gospel. The gospel is we all need to be forgiven. The gospel is he washes away our sin and cleanses us and restores us just like we've never sinned. Amen. That's the gospel is that, listen, every one of us need to be born again. We need to be born physically. We need to be born spiritually. We need to have a spiritual birth. You can never experience the full manifestation of the provisions of God until you're born again. The greatest miracle is when somebody gets saved and the scales are taken off their eyes and they can now see in the spirit. That's the greatest greatest miracle of all. And I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but I want to give you a chance to do that right now. Would you do me a favor and just bow your head with me? If you're here today and you say, Todd, you know, I believe in God, but I'm not sure I've been born again, that I'm saved, that if I die, I'm going to heaven, but I don't want to leave this place today without knowing for sure that I'm right with God. Would you pray for me? If that's you, would you just lift your hand? Just lift it up so I know that I have somebody to pray for. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Just lift your hand. Thank you. We're going to pray this prayer together right now. Would you pray with me, family? Let's pray it together. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood. So my sins could be forgiven. Lord, I want to be born again. Lord, would you come into my heart? I invite you into my life. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. Come, Lord, and touch my life today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Now, if you pray that prayer, the Bible says, to as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. There's a card in the pew. I encourage you to just fill that out. Bring it to the lobby in the resource center, the, the information desk. Let them give you a Bible and give you some tools to help you. It's the greatest miracle of all when you give your life to Christ. It's, I'm telling you, it's an, an adventure of a lifetime. Amen. And, and, and you'll never regret surrendering your life to Christ. Maybe, maybe you need healing in other areas. Would you just stand with me for just a moment? 
I want to pray for you today. How many of you today would say, man, Todd, I need a healing in my physical body today. Let me see your hands. Just keep your hands raised for just a moment. How many of you say, Todd, I I think what I need is an emotional healing. I've been I've been through trauma. I've been I've been through hardship. I've lost loved ones. I'm grieving. I'm sorrowful. I'm sad. How many of you need an emotional healing? Let me see your hands. Just raise your hands right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't know how to have an altar call. There's so many people whose hands are are raised. Listen, I'm just going to pray a general prayer. But I want to I want to invite you and encourage you to come up and let us lay hands on you. There's a transferring of anointing. Jesus said, "Believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover." There's a transferring of anointing. There's an anointing that brings healing. That brings deliverance. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I declare, Lord, that you bore stripes on your back and I take authority over the spirit of infirmity. I break its power. I break its hold. And I command it to leave bodies right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare the healing power of God being released. I declare tumors are shrinking. I declare spines are lining up. Vertebrae are moving back into place. I declare heart disease. Generational sickness is leaving bodies right now in the name of Jesus. I break sugar diabetes. I break high blood pressure. I break high cholesterol. I declare in Jesus' name, the Lord is our healer. And I declare the healing hand of the Lord right now over the people of God. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that your healing hand is here. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I want to pray for you that I know some of you, not, not just like this young man that I talked to yesterday. I mean, the stories I've heard where parents have left their child on a doorstep and never to come back, abandoned or abused by their parents or just the horrendous things that, that, that people have been through. And you have a broken heart. I want you to know that the Lord is the one that can reach right down into your soul. And He can touch that spot that's been bleeding out for years. He's the, He's the balm of Gilead. Father, I pray right now, Lord Jesus, you hear and you see, Lord, the cries of your people. Lord, you see the grief and the sorrow and the brokenness of your people. Lord Jesus, you're the great I am. You're the great healer. Lord, you came to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up their wounds. And I pray, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, that you would release your healing hand over the people of God right now. Lord, give them a miracle right now. I pray in Jesus' name. I thank you. And I praise you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, one more thing. And let's pray for oppression to be broken. Maybe, maybe physically you're not bent over. But maybe... You're bent over in your spirit. Maybe your lamp has gone out and the Lord wants to relight your lamp. Maybe you've been sad day in and day out. Maybe you've been angry and you, you, you having trouble and just taking captive your, your emotions or your mind or whatever it is. I want you to know that the enemy has to back off in Jesus name. And so let's pray right now that the oppression of the enemy would be broken off your life. Come on, let's agree together. Listen, I believe all of us should do warfare over ourselves, over our families, and and break oppression in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that the enemy's hand of pressure and oppression on the people of God is broken right now in Jesus' name. And I declare right now that, Lord, you are breaking the spirit of darkness and evil and wickedness, Lord. We break the powers of the enemy right now off of the people of God. I declare Lord oppression has to leave. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee and we command him to flee right now in the mighty and in the powerful and in the strong name of Jesus we pray amen and amen and amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a good shout. Give Him a good shout of praise. Thank you, 
Father God. Thank you, Lord. Now, we're going to be here to pray. If you want to come up, Blue, just stay here. I want to pray for you, my brother. Just come up and get prayer. We're going to dismiss. If you want prayer, we're going to pray for people here. Father, I pray the blessing and the favor of the Lord. And I pray, Lord, the liberty and freedom, which you have paid such a high price for, Lord. May we walk in it, spirit, soul, and body, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Be blessed. Thank you. For